Welcome back to Honors Calculus. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion with Riemann sums, introducing the concept of the definite integral. So without further ado, let me get my head out of the way. And we're going to pick up right where we left off. The area underneath a curve is given by the sum k going from one to n of f of a plus k delta x times delta x plus delta x over two times f of a minus f of b. This calculates the area given an arbitrary curve between points A and B. And delta X we defined as B minus A over N. We take the interval from A to B, we divide it up into N pieces. And what we said when we defined this was that as you get larger values of N, as you divide the interval into more pieces, you get more accurate approximations of the area. So now it's time to introduce calculus to this discussion because dividing things up into more and more pieces, eventually we can divide it up into infinitely many pieces. the limit as n goes to infinity on A. And as we take that limit, we'll get A uh, closer and closer And we claim that the limit as n goes to infinity on A gives the exact area of the region instead of a close approximation. And in fact, this is the definition of area as it's often discussed. And we call this thing the definite integral. of f on a b. So to put that clearly, we define uh, noting integral, we put a fancy looking capital I is what that thing's supposed to be. I always thought it looked more like an S, but it's a fancy looking capital I. We start at a, we go to b, and we're integrating f of x, just like with the derivative, to talk about the integral, we have to mention what we are integrating, uh, our variable of integration, just like we needed a variable for differentiation. And we're going to use the differential form. So f of x dx, that's not times dx, although as we saw when we talked about differentials, kind of close enough, um, but that's saying take the integral with respect to x. And again, we define this as the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum, k goes from one to n of f of a plus k delta x times delta x, and then we had delta x over two times f of a minus f of b.
interesting feature of this limit is that as delta x, I'm sorry, as n goes to infinity, it's going to turn out that delta x goes to zero, right? Delta x is b minus a over n. And we saw that when you take the limit as n goes to infinity with n in the denominator, you go to zero. So as n goes to infinity, delta x goes to zero. F of A and F of B are constants. For a particular function, A is chosen, B is chosen. These things are constants. So this whole term over here is some constant times delta X, which goes to zero. So in the limit, as N goes to infinity, that whole term goes to zero and goes away, and we find that we don't actually need it. And so simplifying, we can say that the integral from a to b of f of x dx is simply the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum, k goes from one to n of f of a plus k delta x times delta x. Before I get to the example, one last quick definition. We say that F is integrable on the interval from a to b if and only if the integral from a to b of f of x dx is defined. If the limit does not exist, then the function is not integrable on that region. Now, I can go on to an example and let's calculate the integral from zero to two of x squared dx. This is a problem that we've looked at already. We considered the area bounded below by the x-axis and above by the function f of x equals x squared. And we divided it up into regions in order to calculate the area. So we're not doing anything different now than what we did before, except that we don't have a value of n. So I'm going to define my delta x as b minus a or two minus zero over n. And again, I don't know what n is, so I leave it as n in this case. And we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum, k goes from one to n of the function squared evaluated at zero plus k times delta x, which is two over n, squaring that, and then multiplied by delta x, which is two over n. Right. Simplifying a little bit here. Uh, zero plus K times two over N. We can write more simply as two K over N, that thing's still being squared. And squaring a fraction, we can square each of the factors.
So that's four k squared over n squared times two over n. or eight K squared over N cubed. Notice here that the eight and the N cubed are not functions of K. So we can bring them out of the summation. The limit and the summation are two different things. We still have to worry about the limit as N goes to infinity. But we can bring that eight and we can bring that n cubed out and we can just focus on the sum k goes from one to n of k squared. And from our rules of summations, we know that the sum k goes from one to n of n squared. Is n times n plus one times two n plus one all over six. Distributing in the numerator and in the denominator, and dividing this out so that we will be able to evaluate our limit. Let's see, 16 over six is eight over three, n cubed over n cubed is one. And then we're going to end up with four over n and four over three n squared. And taking the limit as n goes to infinity, that term becomes zero, that term becomes zero, and we're left just with the integral from zero to two of x squared dx is eight over three. Finding a result here is also enough for us to conclude that yes, this is an integrable function. Sorry about that. Let's take a look at another example. This time the integral from negative two to two of four minus x squared dx. And once again, this is a problem that we saw in the last video just turned up a little bit we looked at the area of the region to find uh, bounded above by four minus x squared and bounded below by the x axis. We saw that the left and right constraints were negative two and two. So this is just asking us to calculate that same area again. And once again, we'll start by defining our delta x, which is b minus a over n, which is not given a value this time because we're going to be working with that as an um, object variable. So delta x is four over n. And the integral by definition is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum, k goes from one to n of our function four minus x squared evaluated at a plus k delta x. So we have four minus uh, a, which is negative two plus k times delta x, which is four over n times delta x, which is, oh, getting ahead of myself, I left off the square. And right? it is x squared, not just x. 
So there's the function evaluated at a plus k delta x. And then we multiply by delta x, which is four over n. Great. Multiply out, this is going to be a little bit more involved. So we have negative two squared, which is four. We have negative two times four K over N and we'll have two of those. So that's going to be 16 K over N. And then we'll have four K over N squared, which is 16 K squared over N squared. And this whole thing gets multiplied by four over n. Uh, four minus four cancel each other out, distributing the four over n through everything. So we'll end up with 64k over n squared plus 64k squared over n cubed. Now that we've done that, we can use the linearity of summations. Remember 64 and n are both constant with respect to k, so we can bring them out of the summation. And we can look at the limit as n goes to infinity of 64 over n squared times the sum k goes from one to n of k, and we can look at 64 over n cubed times the sum k goes from one to n of k squared. Summation rules tell us that the sum k goes from one to n of k is going to be k, no, not k, n times n plus one over two. And the sum k goes from one to n of k squared is going to be n times n plus one times two n plus one all over six. And we can do our best to multiply all of this stuff out. I can push a wrong button and have everything go haywire. Sorry about that. Um, but we can uh, distribute here. Uh, n times n plus one is n squared plus n. Uh, 64 over two uh, simplifies to 32. And let's write it as 64 n squared plus 64 n all over two n squared. And then likewise, we will have uh, 64 times two, which is 128 n cubed. We will have uh, n plus two n is three n times n, it's three n squared times 64 is, under two n squared, and we have 64 n all over six n cubed, and dividing all of these things out so that we can take the limit. We are looking at 64 n squared divided by two n squared is 32. 64 n divided by two n squared is 32 over n. 128 n cubed over six n cubed is 64 over three. 102 n squared over six n squared is 102, that should be 192. Dividing that off, that's gonna give me 32 
over n, and then we will have 32 over 3n squared in my last term. From here, taking the limit as n goes to infinity, that goes to zero, that goes to zero, and that goes to zero, leaving me with 32 plus 64 over three. And let's see some fraction work. Uh, 32 is 96 over three. And 96 plus 64 is 160. So the integral from negative two to two of four minus x squared is 160 over three. And continuing this trend, here's one for you to take a look at. I'd like you to calculate the integral from zero to one of x minus x squared, which should give you a similar result to the problem you looked at for the first video. Take a few minutes, see what you can do with that one, and I'll see you in the next video.